Well, hello friends, bring you greetings on this beautiful day and praise God for the gift of this day and for our time to be together in the word. Well, we continue our journey through Revelation. We're getting ready to start chapter 12, and this is a major shifting point in the book of Revelation. In fact, well, chapters 12 through 16 uh, uh, come together as, as kind of a unit. And as I was preparing for this, uh, I was, I don't, I don't know if struggling is the right word, but I, I, I feel like I want you to have the introduction that I've had to this. And for, for doing my preparation, one of the tools that I use is the New International, I'll hold it up here, New International Commentary on the New Testament. Um, they have another one that partners with it, the New International Commentary on the Old Testament. And why I like this commentary series, most of the time when you find commentaries, it, it's an individual who has, or maybe a small group of individuals, who have written on the entire Bible. And so they go through every, every book, every verse, and, and they write their insights on it. Um, and, and it is, it, it's their insights or their interpretation or, or their understanding of it. And one of the things I, that I really value about this series is that it is not one writer or a handful of writers writing on the whole Bible. It is a group of specialists who have spent their life in that particular book. So when we see Mounts, he is studying the book of Revelation and he's bringing that to us and he works with a team to, to bring some of the insight, but you won't see Mounts' name on any of the other commentaries uh, in, in the entire series. I mean, he, he is a specialist in Revelation. You'd have a specialist in the Gospel of John. You'd have where they have spent their entire life studying that culture, studying, in, in Mounts' case, studying prophetic language, studying the history, uh, of that of the times in which John wrote to, to look at some of the imagery and to be able to grasp some of that uh, studying the structure of the language studying, studying the culture of the times and, and so that that's why I value it the other thing is is that the, these commentators don't come down with absolutes in things where there's there's debate they bring forth the different sides they weigh the different ideas in it and uh, that they put forth, you know, sometimes some arguments to formulate and say, okay, well, there's, the, if there's five different uh, views on what this passage might mean. Our argument is, is that these three are really implausible, and here's why. And, and it, it would leave us down to two, and then it'll lift up some of the pros and cons of each side of that in light of history and culture and language, writer and hearers, and that sort of thing. So, uh, I, I really I value the series, I value what, what it brings forth, and it's certainly been a great tool uh, to me in my study, and my preaching, and my teaching. And what I want to do today is I want to actually share with you the introduction to this next section. Um, not, not try to summarize, but, but just read it outright to you. So, uh, and then we'll actually get into the scripture itself, but this is an introduction to this next section. So this chapter 12 marks a major division in the book of Revelation. Before the seven last plagues of chapter 16, in which the wrath of God is finished, John turns aside to explain the underlying cause for the hostility about to break upon the church. During his earthly ministry, Jesus warned, If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. It is the age-long conflict between God and Satan that accounts for the persecution of the church that the church is to experience. And this comes out of John 15, 20, where he said, if they persecuted me, they'll persecute you also. Although the crucial battle was won when Christ arose victorious over death and the grave over death in the grave, the adversary continues his struggle. Cast down from heaven, and knowing that his time is short, Satan turns in rage against the faithful who obey God's commandments and hold to the testimony of Jesus. By laying bare the root cause of persecution, John would encourage believers to hold fast in the coming tribulation. The death struggle of a defeated foe will bring severe tribulation, but the outcome is certain. God will come in judgment to destroy his enemies. And that's what we see in chapters 15 through 19 of Revelation. And he will reward his own. We see that in, we'll see that in chapters 20 through 22. The stage is thus set for the final confrontation. Chapters 12 through 14 introduce the actors who play the major roles. 
Some writers identify the seven main characters as the radiant woman, the dragon, the man-child, Michael, the archangel, the seed of the woman, and the two beasts. Others who organize the chapter around the number seven find seven oracles depicting the supernatural conflict between the forces of light and the forces of darkness, or seven signs connected with the troubles of the church. The chapter consists of three scenes, the woman, the dragon, the male child. Satan defeated and cast out of heaven and the persecution of the woman uh, and her offspring. While the third scene is a continuation and expansion of the first, the second scene serves to explain Satan's violent opposition to the church. Together, they reveal to the believing community the ultimate cause for increased opposition and hostility that they will meet in the last days. Beyond that, the visions in chapter 12 from the, theology, from the theological heart of the entire book, in Christ, God enraged Satan in the alt, er, enraged, engaged Satan in the ultimate battle of the holy war. The redemptive triumph of Christ in his death and resurrection was the crucial defeat of Satan and the forces of evil. Yet for a time, the dragon vigorously pursues the people of God, hence there is great suffering in the final days which extend from Pentecost to the return of Christ. And so I, want, I wanted to share that with you because I think that that sets up what is going on in, in these next chapters. And it talks about the great persecution that Satan will bring. Certainly Satan is bringing great persecution against, you know, against Christians in the here and now, but he will bring even greater persecution in the last days. And we think about the suffering and what, what we will endure under Satan's attacks, what we do endure under Satan's attacks, and to know that on our own, by our own strength, by our own wits, we will never be able to, to endure, to hold up. Our only answer is to cling to the one who defeated Satan, to cling to the one who is our victory, to cling to the one who is our strength. He triumphed over death and the grave for us, and he gave us the Holy Spirit that we may stand powerful that we may stand as the church united, that we may stand and even the gates of hell can't stand against us, that we may stand faithful, trusting in Christ all the days of our life, no matter what may cross our path. And so friends, I believe that we are ready to enter this next section of the book of Revelation. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we begin our journey. Friends, God bless you. Know that God loves you. Have a blessed day.